I must admit that I underestimated the knowledge level of my channel's viewers. I thought that most of my viewers could only understand my videos mocking the Indian government, and they were not interested in some videos that required a higher level of knowledge. However, judging from the number of views and completion of my videos discussing AI, my channel still has quite a lot of visitors who pay attention to technology topics such as AI and chips. So in this video, let's add another challenge and analyze from a more in-depth technical perspective why NVIDIA's AI empire and the entire generative AI industry in the United States are a huge bubble. I mentioned in the previous video that the fundamental reason why NVIDIA's GPU has become the hardware standard for AI computing is that compared with CPU, GPU is good at floating point operations, parallel operations, and has higher memory bandwidth, which is more suitable for the computing needs of large AI models. It is essentially equivalent to the DSP chip of the early set-top box. Compared with the general-purpose CPU, it is a chip specially designed for decoding audio and video. It has built-in decoding units for mainstream video formats such as H.264 and MPEG, so it only needs very low power consumption to achieve 1080p playback. At that time, general-purpose computers needed high-end CPUs to play 1080p videos smoothly, and the power consumption was much higher. Let's use a simple example to illustrate that the CPU of a computer is equivalent to a Swiss Army knife. It can be used to open cans, tighten screws, act as tweezers, and can also be used to peel fruit. It is an all-round player. However, few people will use a Swiss Army knife to peel fruit because there are special fruit knives. In the case of special bottle openers, screwdrivers, and tweezers, few people will use Swiss Army knife to replace these tools. The DSP we mentioned is a fruit knife specifically used to peel fruit. It is not as versatile as the Swiss Army knife, but it is far ahead of the Swiss Army knife in the function of peeling fruit. More importantly, it is cheap. Then if NVIDIA's GPU is a fruit knife, compared with the general-purpose CPU that is an ordinary Swiss Army knife, isn't it the ultimate choice for AI computing? Of course not. NVIDIA is an all-round fruit knife. It can be used to peel all fruits and can meet 90% of the needs. But for some special fruits, the effect of using a fruit knife to handle them is not good. For example, if we want to drink coconut juice, it is much easier to use a dedicated hole puncher than to use a fruit knife to make a hole, and it is cheaper. The dedicated pineapple knife is also very cheap, and the effect is very good. Yes, NVIDIA's GPU is not the ultimate choice for AI computing, but more professional ASIC chips are. NVIDIA currently uses CUDA to make itself a general-purpose fruit knife for AI computing, which can fully call on the hardware performance of NVIDIA's AI chip. Although NVIDIA has specially optimized the AI chip and cut off many functions of the general-purpose GPU, it is still not a chip designed specifically for specific AI computing scenarios, and the pursuit is still comprehensiveness. Today's NVIDIA can provide excellent computing power for various large models, but NVIDIA is not an AI product company. Its understanding of AI comes from customer feedback, such as OpenAI, Claude, Meta, Microsoft, etc. Even AI product companies like OpenAI, which have basic chats and image generation, are not directly facing customers in most cases. It provides API calls for first-line AI products and service manufacturers. For example, Apple is what we call an AI service provider. Its mobile phones integrate OpenAI's basic services and provide AI voice assistance, smart photo editing, video processing, and other functions. Another example is CapCut, which calls ByteDance AI computing power service to generate various AI materials in the editor and process video effects. We can input a news release, call CapCut's digital human function, and directly generate a news video. NVIDIA can be a fruit knife, and Huawei can of course. So Huawei launched its own Ascend series chips to compete with NVIDIA. But Huawei has a huge advantage, that is, it is an AI product and service provider. Huawei not only has its own AI big model Pangu, which provides basic services for small and medium-sized enterprises, but it is also integrated into Huawei mobile phones, providing AI photo editing, voice assistance, image generation, document processing, and other AI services. 
Huawei is also an important solution provider for smart cars. This is a business with a large number of AI computing needs. Their core functions can be abstracted, summarized, and finally packaged into chips by Huawei. This is the Huawei brand fruit knife. Huawei can also develop dedicated ASIC chips specifically for specific scenarios to replace various AI chips on the market. Chip companies such as Cambrian are doing the same thing. This is like when mining was popular, a large number of companies used GPU mining, which was much more efficient than CPU. However, GPUs are much less cost-effective than specialized mining chips, such as the ASIC chips developed by Bitmain for Bitcoin. Although the general AI big model is omnipotent, it is by no means the ultimate answer to AI. There is no need to use the same specification chip as the big model for processing video for a big model that specializes in voice training. Developing a dedicated ASIC chip for voice training is not only more efficient, but also saves a lot of costs. This can be understood as various pineapple knives and coconut punchers. As the big model dispute becomes more peaceful, it is not difficult for technicians to find that many algorithm processes can be optimized and a large number of low-energy and high-loss calculations are unnecessary. These functions have pushed up the specification requirements of AI computing chips, but the improvement in production efficiency brought about is almost zero. For example, DeepSeek, released by a Chinese manufacturer, has achieved similar functions to well-known manufacturers such as OpenAI by simplifying the computing model and using low-level NVIDIA chips, and the cost consumption has been reduced by more than 10 times. With the further development of AI models, most core functions will be abstracted to simple ASIC chips, while those less commonly used functions can be completed using general-purpose CPUs, which can greatly reduce the cost of AI business and make expensive NVIDIA chips uncompetitive. The rapid development of quantum chips also provides another possibility for ASIC chips. To be precise, the best entry point for quantum chips is not to replace CPUs, but to start with ASIC chips. Once the core algorithms of large AI models are accurately abstracted and implemented through quantum chips, the computing power will increase exponentially, which will be another nightmare for NVIDIA. NVIDIA's current market value is as high as 3.4 trillion, equivalent to the GDP of India or ASEAN, and the valuation of the entire U.S. generative AI industry is even more amazing. However, so far, they have not created any outstanding social wealth. Wall Street and Silicon Valley upstarts have been frantically hyping stock prices and creating one bubble after another. In fact, except for a few cases with application value, most companies' products are undoubted industrial garbage. These bubbles will be burst sooner or later including NVIDIA's stock price, and will return to its due level. I have always emphasized that the entire United States bet on the generative AI industry is extremely stupid, both from a national strategic and technological perspective, and will definitely pay a huge price for it. If Americans fantasize about bringing down China by hyping up new technology concepts, just like they brought down the Soviet Union with the fake moon landing, then they are obviously overthinking.